Hi everyone, Hermano here and welcome again to the channel. So finally, this is part three on how to install Nextcloud on Fedora server. And in this part three, we are going to install actually an SSL certificate. And I'm going to show you how to access your Nextcloud installation from outside your local network. So before proceeding installing the SSL certificate, let's begin to configure the dynamic DNS that we will need to access this installation of Nextcloud from outside your local network. Now, there are several ways on how to do that, and I tested a lot of them. But one of the simplest one I found is actually to use Cloud DNS. So I'm going to switch over here to the website of Cloud DNS. You'll have to register on the website. It's free. And the advantage of Cloud DNS is that they do offer actually a free version where you can actually register a DNS zone. So once you actually signed up for the account and logged in here, you will see this portal. And the first thing you want to do is to go to the DNS zones here and click on add new. And you're going to choose free zone. Now you have a choice here to register your domain name using these two addresses, dns-cloud or dnsabr.com. So I'm going to use dnsabr.com. And I'm going to call my Nextcloud installation Nextcloud EF and click register. Now, once we have done that, we go to the A record and click here. And we need to create a new record. So we click on add new record. And under host, I will leave this empty as this is already my address for my next cloud installation. Now we need to tell this A record where to point. So which IP basically this installation is pointing to. So we need to find out here actually not our next cloud IP installation, but our public IP. So to do that, it's very simple. You just go to Google and you'll type in here IP and you'll see your IP here on the top. So I'll select this and copy it and I'll go back to cloud DNS and I will point here this domain to this IP and click save. So once we have done that, what we need to do is to actually click this up and down arrow because we need to activate the dynamic URL. So we click on activate it. And now it's active. Here we get actually many infos on how to actually use this link. But before we proceed doing that, we need to actually configure our router. So I will leave this page open here and switch over to my router. So this is the part where actually it will depend a lot on how your router works. So I can show you how it works on mine. I had also some issues with another router and then I asked my ISP to change it and they gave me now a Fritz box, which is working really well. But I did have issues with my previous router. I couldn't configure dynamic DNS. So how this configuration will work, it really depends on your router. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go to home network and under network here, I will search for the next cloud installation I have, which in my case is the one ending with 23. This is my IP for the next cloud installation. So I'm going to click here on the edit button. And I want to tell my router actually to give this IP every time the machine starts. So I click on always assign this network device to the same IP. And I want to make sure that the computer starts automatically as soon as it is accessed from the internet. And then I'll click OK. And my machine is now here configured. Now, the next thing I need to do is to open the port for HTTP and the HTTPS protocols. So to do that on my router, I'm going to go under Internet and then Permit Access. And I'm going to click on Add Device for Sharing in my case. And then I'll need to select the Fedora install I just saw before. So in my case here, I have several Fedoras. I'll try to click the first one and see if that's the one which is not. So I go to the second one. It's not neither. And I'll try the last one. And that's it. So the 23 is the one I'm looking for. So now I need to give port 80 and port 443 access. So I'll click on new sharing. And for application, I'll select in my case, HTTP server. And it's correctly configured for TCP and port 80 and then click OK. And I want to configure also the HTTPS protocol. So I'll click again, new sharing. 
and this time I go to HTTPS and again it's correctly configured TCP 443 so I'll just click OK and now click OK to confirm and I can see now my HTTP port is already active and the HTTPS is not so I'll just click apply to refresh and now both ports are configured correctly so now the next step would be to actually configure the dynamic DNS in our router. So I go here in my case to the dynamic DNS tab and I'll have to click on use dynamic DNS. So because I'm using cloud DNS, I'll go to user defined and under the update URL link, I'll go back to the cloud DNS website and I'll copy this link here and going back to my Fritz box, I will have to actually paste the link in here. And this is the update URL. So that means every time your public IP is going to change, this link is going to make sure that the domain that you chose is going to be redirected to the new IP. Now under domain name, I'm going to copy the domain I chose before. And I will paste it in here. And then I'll enter also my username, which is correct, and my password, and then click Apply. And it's going to take a moment, and as you can see now, the dynamic DNS is now enabled, the server name is there, and it's logged on. That means it's configured correctly. So now that we have configured the dynamic DNS and the ports on our router, we need to go back to Nextcloud, and configure a few files. So I'm gonna go back to my terminal here and clean up the terminal. So the first thing we need to do is to configure the config.php file in Nextcloud. So let's navigate to the Nextcloud directory by doing cd slash var slash www slash html slash nextcloud slash config and hit enter. And now we type in nano because we want to edit the file and the file is config.php and hit enter. Now, as you can see here, we have several strings. The one we need to change is under array. This is basically the list of IPs which are whitelisted to access our installation. So we have already our internal IP and now we need to add also our domain which we just registered by cloud DNS. So I'll just scroll down here and enter one space and type here one space equal greater than sign, then space and then a single quote and the domain we chose before. So in my case is nextcloud ef dot and then a single quote again and a comma to close the string. Then once we have done that, we can hit control O and enter to save the file and control X to exit the editor. Now for this change to come in effect, we need to restart the server. So we'll type in system CTL restart HTTPD and hit enter. There we go. Now, before we install the SSL certificate, we need to also edit another file, which is the httpd.com file. So to do that, we'll type in cd first, we want to change directory, slash etsy, slash httpd, slash conf, and hit enter. And then we want to edit this file. So we type in nano, httpd.conf, and hit enter. Now we scroll down to the end of this document, and it's quite a long document, so you'll have to scroll a little bit. And we will include these lines. So first, the minor than sign, then virtual host, space, asterisk, colon, 80, and then greater than sign. And then on the next line, we define where the document root directory is. So we'll type in document root. And in our case, it's slash var slash www slash html slash nextcloud in the next line we will type in server name and then our domain so in my case nextcloud ef dot dnsabr dot com 
And then moving to the next line, we'll type in a minor than sign and then a forward slash virtual host and then the greater than sign. And then we hit control O and enter to save the file and control X to exit the editor. Now we can install the SSL certificate. So to do this, we will make sure that the mod SSL package is installed. So first we'll type in DNF install mod underscore SSL and hit enter. And now hit Y to accept the change. And there you go. Then I clean up the terminal. Now I want to actually download the Let's Encrypt certificate to my computer. So to do that, I'll need Git. So we'll have to install Git first by typing in then DNF install Git and hit enter. Accept Y to check the changes. It's going to take a moment to install. There you go. Then I'll clean up the terminal. Now we want to go to the local directory, so I'll type in cd slash user slash local and hit enter. And I'm going to use git now to download Let's Encrypt, which is going to be our certificate for the next cloud installation. So I'll type in git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash let's encrypt slash let's encrypt and hit enter. There you go. Now, if we type in ls, we'll see that there is a let's encrypt directory there and we want to go in there. So we'll type in cd let's encrypt and hit enter. And now we'll run the SSL certificate. So we'll type in dot forward slash let's encrypt dash auto space dash dash apache space dash d and then our domain so in my case was nextcloud ef dot dns abr dot com and hit enter it's going to take a moment to install the certificate so you have to be patient here So we have an error here, but we can ignore this for now. So it asks us to enter one email address used for renewal and security notices. So I'll type in my address here. And hit enter. Now we have to agree to the term. So I'll type in capital A and hit enter. I don't want to receive email with news. So I'll type in N and hit enter. And now we are obtaining the certificate. And here it asks us if we want to redirect every HTTP to HTTPS request, which I want to do. So I'll type in two and hit enter. And there you go. Congratulations. The certificate has been installed. So let's first again restart HTTPD by typing in system CTL restart HTTPD and hit enter. And now I'm going to minimize this window and I go back to my browser. So I go now to a new private window and I will type in nextcloud ef.dnsabr.com slash nextcloud because we installed actually nextcloud in the nextcloud directory. If we would have installed nextcloud in the HTML directory, then the full domain will be your nextcloud installation. But I don't want to do that because I want to install maybe something else on my main domain and I want nextcloud to be under the nextcloud directory. So once I hit enter, as you can see, we have now HTTPS with SSL enabled and I'll enter my username here and my password. And now I am in my installation from the external address with SSL included. So this is one way how to install SSL and access Nextcloud from outside your local network. As I said before, it will depend a lot from your router, whether it's configurable and dynamic DNS is also configurable there. I showed you how it works on my router, so on yours you'll have to test out and see what's the best solution for you. But for this video, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, make sure you like it by clicking the like button below and subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of future videos. Subscriptions really helps us out, guys. And if there is anything specific you want me to cover or you have any question, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.